Hey, what's going on? It's Sparks. That over there is not Pike and it is not Greg Salerno because, well, to be honest, everything kind of hit the fan today. So it is my brother, Brian. Hi, Brian. How are you? Hey, hey, thanks so much for having me on. Although I think that intro could have been spiced up a little bit. Not, what do you mean? This guy is uh, not as good as Pike, <laughs> but, you know. That's a little rude. You could do, I, we, you know, we forget Pike. <laughs> <laughs> Who even remembers that guy? This guy is so much better. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we're so used to seeing Pike on here every single day, and then on Fridays normally we have Pike and Greg on the show. But uh, something came up with Greg, and then Pike was like, "Oh, dude." I totally forgot. I scheduled a band writing session on Friday, and I was like. You know, okay, no worries, man. You know, that's fine. I got Greg. Greg will just pop on the show. You know, we'll just be a two for. And then Greg was like, oh, man, I'm sorry. Like, I can't do it. <laughs> and I was like, that's all right. Luckily, my brother, Brian, this lovely human being drinking a beer you see next to us, is in town from Chicago. He lives and works in Chicago and he's here in town. Let me just tell you how magnificent of a human. My brother Brian is. He helped me lift a. It's not a box spring. It, they call it a base. We have a Tempur-Pedic bed because I don't sleep like poor people. And so what happens is, it's I don't sleep like a poor person, but I move in like a poor person because I had to call family over. Hey, can you uh, can you help me move this in? And Brian, how heavy was it? Oh man, uh, each like, what do you part think? was about. 350. So I would say total is about 700 pounds. We like each of these. If if you've ever moved one of these, they have motors in it, dude. It's insane. It's like the most cr- insane mattress ever. And it's true. Like this is how rich people sleep. And I don't deserve this mattress. I got it through like a radio promotion a long time ago. And I, I've never slept so good in my life. So I'm not getting paid for this. I wish I was, but the Tempur-Pedic hype is real. Like that's a real thing. So uh, I appreciate Brian coming over, helping me lift the mattress. And then Greg texts me, oh, I can't do it today. And then I was like, hey, Brian, you want to be on the show? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, let's do it. So that's how cool Brian is. So thank you so much uh, for doing this, man. Yeah. I don't even know. Do you want me to plug the social media? Do you, would you want me to plug anything? In particular, or? Uh, no, this is oh. my only passion <laughs> drinking beer and talking to you. So, I love it. Uh, He's how about Modelo Negra? All right, Modelo there Negra. Go. There you go. Brian is drinking a delightful Modelo. I love that beer. All right, so. It is five on Friday. We're going to answer five of your questions that you wrote in here on social media. I'm just going to pick five at random. Some of these were written for specifically Greg, specifically Pike and specifically me, but I'm going to keep them neutral because I got my, I got my brother here on the show and I want to, you know, he's my bro and I want to have nice, this is going to be the most honest discussion we've had in a very long time. Brian, are you ready or are you nervous? (laughs) Uh, Both. Okay. Fair enough. Here we go. Let's go to this is from this is from at corrupted 68. Question number one, the best vacation spot you ever had. Best vacation spot you ever had. Brian, he's a world traveler. You've been all over the place, man. You've been you've seen the yeah. a good fair share of the world. What do you got? Oh, God, just the best one. That's tough. They're all good, right? Because you're not working. So it's all good. Yeah, uh, I would probably have to say Tuscany. Look at in that, Italy. Look how worldly of a man yeah. this guy is. Tuscany yeah. in Tuscany. Italy? Are you Tuscany. kidding me? It's got the best of everything. It's tell me about nature. Tuscany. It's got well. You know, it's the best thing about Tuscany is it's a it's beef country. You know, like they're really big <laughs> on steaks. <laughs> so. You go to a you go to a restaurant in Tuscany. It's not like an Italian restaurant. It's a steakhouse. Spoken like a you true know? Ohioan. You know what's the greatest place on earth? Beef country. <laughs> the place where yeah. you know what my favorite vacation spot is? Steakhouses. <laughs> <laughs> what you right. like about Italy, Brian? The pasta, the food, the wine, beef. They have great beef. 
They do. They really know how to treat their beef. They do it. They do it well. Okay. So what, so Tuscany's in the Hills, right? You're up in the Hills of Tuscany. That's why I always hear. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. Tuscan Hills. The Tuscan Hills. Everything is like a taupe color. I imagine much like the walls of my, as Pike calls it, a church room. <laughs> that I broadcast out of the Sparks Radio. That's true. You, you're you're in Tuscany with the color of that room. It's that's right. It's that Tuscan sun. That's right. It's, that's uh, right. It's mellow yellow. <laughs> I don't know why it's so yellow on camera. Uh, by the way, Brian is just upstairs. <laughs> He's not doing this from his. Uh, he could come down here in this room in like two seconds if he wanted, but. I look terrible in yellow. Oh, stop. I know. I look like I'm sunburned on this camera. All right, so I'll fix it. So you're in the hills of Tuscany. You go to the steakhouses yeah. and you just what? You live it up? Is that it? Yeah, I mean, it's like endless courses. Like, it's the only country in the world that has more ridiculous portion sizes than America. And they have table wine and they don't have like a limit. It's like bottomless table wine. And the wine is so delicious because it was made next door. And they give you giant heaps of steak and like fresh vegetables that the, you know, the Italian mother in the back just like pulled out of the garden that morning. It's just like the best food, the best culture. It just is like a magical place. Plus olives are everywhere. It's like olives are their version of, I don't know. I, in my world, it's like rats. Splenda. Like there's more. Uh, yeah, <laughs> rats. <it's just> like, <laughs> you can, there is literally an olive tree on every corner. It's, it's amazing. Really? It's beautiful. Beautiful. Yep. Weather wise, it's perfect. Wow. So Tuscany is what about you, Spark? Wanna go back. You call me Sparks, it's weird. Um You're also Sparks too, by the way. My brother's also been called Sparks his whole life. Um actually at work people call me Sparkles. So I get that all the time too, dude. Sparkles. It's a little different. The spark did you yeah. get Sparky growing up in school? Uh no. Sparky all the time. Not too much sparkly. Yeah. yeah. This guy, his name was uh, Justin. I don't remember his last name. But he had a dog named Sparky and everyone kept calling, oh, Sparky, that's like Justin's dog. I was like, you know what? Fuck Justin. Call me Sparky. Um, By the way, Justin, I have nothing against you. Um, My favorite vacation spot still to this day would probably be Hawaii. And I think it's just, it's, it is unholy beautiful even the air smells good in hawaii like when you get off the plane in hawaii and brian you and i went there together uh and we held hands on the beach but um when you get off the plane do you remember getting off the plane and it's smelling floral it smells like fresh laundry when you get off the plane that's yeah yeah and you're just like oh like even the air is better here you know (laughs) it's yeah absolutely and any Hawaiian that's like, I've got island fever. I just want to be like, dude, you have no idea how good you got it. Like if you, if I lived on Hawaii, I'd be like, why leave? Like it would take me decades to get island fever. I might feel, well, only thing I remember like the immediate feeling of getting off the plane was that the airport didn't have any walls. It was an out, it was, everything was outdoor just with like a roof. Yeah, and I was it was so bizarre because I think we were on our way from Minnesota at that time, yeah. and it was like snowing when we took off, and then we came there, and there was literally no. It was all outside. It was the weirdest airport I think I've ever been in. Yeah, the walls in Hawaii's airport, and I don't remember which airport it was because I, I mean maybe it's multiple airports, but I've only been to Oahu, but I would love to go to all the islands, but. uh Birds are like flying. They're like just flying through the airport because there's no walls. You're like, this is such a nice place. We don't need walls. Like, I hope every terrorist on an airline comes through Hawaii because they're not going to do anything. Like, they'll just be like, dude, we can't. Let's go. Let's just turn around and go to Hawaii again. Like, why carry out our mission? We should just stay there because it was so nice. Like, I understand why, you know. (laughs) People, fat guys are playing the ukulele all the time there. It's just a happy place, and I love it, and I would love to live there one day. That's probably my goal for retirement, is to just uh, retire in Hawaii. It's just so awesome. Uh, except for the NFL, it like starts at like 6 a.m. there, which is... Nobody wants to watch football at 6 a.m. I mean, nobody wants to do anything at 6 a.m. Yeah. Uh Let's go to this one here. This is from Electric Analyst. 
on Instagram. Question number two, electric analyst. This is something you and I can both relate to. Uh, this is Gilbert in Vegas. He says, is there, a, is there an absolutely awesome place to visit? Oh, is there an absolutely awesome place one needs to visit in Ohio? You go first. Oh, wow. Oh, geez. Absolutely have to see a certain place in Ohio. I mean, I have a number of them. This yeah, I know. I have state. like six <laughs> it's like, right off the top of my head. It's culturally, it's got some great culture and nature. Great nature. I don't know. It's, it's a, I would say a must for me would be West Side Market would probably be the place. Okay. But like so you have to go see if you're if you're visiting Ohio, if you're visiting Cleveland specifically, go down to the West Side Market for an hour or two and really get a sense of what the Midwest is about. See, you say Midwest, and I've I never considered Ohio Midwest ever. I, I'll say this. I'll never consider Northeast Ohio Midwest. It's like its own thing. Cause I've I've lived obviously majority of my life in the Midwest and I've worked in North Dakota and lived in North Dakota and I've lived in Nebraska and worked in Nebraska. To me, that is a different culture. That's a different way of life. You live in Chicago. I feel like the people in Chicago are different than the people in, you know, in especially Northeast Ohio, Southern Ohio, Columbus. I get it. It's more of the plains, but up here, Northeast Ohio, it is, it's like a different state. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like its own little thing. I always call it yeah. my secret garden. I, I, that's why I call Cleveland. Cleveland's like my secret garden. It's like everybody bashes it. Nobody likes it. Everyone. It's like so under the radar for most people, but you come here and it's a place that it gets in your bones. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you breathe it in and uh, you just start to, you start to love it and you really want it to, you really want it to flourish. It's almost like a kid. You know what I mean? You're like, come on. Yeah. You can do it. Come on. Yeah. You, you or, make a, it. Or, or a terminal illness. <laughs> Come on, you can make it. Yeah, it's just a different tone. It's, you're saying the same thing. Just more desperation. <laughs> you can do it. You can make it. Keep your head up. Uh, I swear. We'll get through this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, West Side Market. I, I, that's an amazing thing. So if you've ever heard of the West Side Market, you don't know what it is. Cleveland is split in the East Side, West Side. And people on the West Side really don't go to the East Side. And people on the East Side really don't go to the West Side. It's like two different worlds. Uh, cause it's right on the lake, Lake Erie. So, uh, it's the city's kind of split down the middle that way. But I'm right next to downtown in a, like, I guess it's a suburb, but it's technically still, I guess it's technically Ohio City is the city it's in, but it's just on the other side of a bridge. Uh, it's a place called West Side Market, and it is absolutely remarkable. And Anthony Bourdain was there. Anthony Bourdain did a did an episode uh, in the West Side Market, and he was like blown away. It was pretty cool. I remember, I remember he went to like Slimans uh, to get some. Uh, sandwiches and then he got went to the west side market and then he i don't know where else i think he went to hot sauce williams for some food oh uh, yeah yeah dude so hot sauce williams. Yeah. there's a lot of like amazing cool treasures around town and uh i'll just compare it to vegas because gilbert's from vegas and i've lived in both places the culture of vegas is if it's old tear it down build something new and that's just how it is. And that's just what it's like. And the culture of Cleveland and particularly the East Coast is if it's old, cherish it. Remodel it inside if you can, but don't you goddamn dare touch the outside of this building. You know, like that's the difference. It's a different mindset. And I think Vegas is getting a little bit different. You know, they're starting to cherish the old school Vegas, the downtown. Uh, but then again, you just built, you know, Circa which is a brand new hotel there. So I, I I still think the Vegas thing is, oh, it's 10 years old. Light it on fire or, or just implode it. You know what I mean? This kind of a mentality and uh, build something new and flashy and shiny. And then uh, the West Side Market, I think it was built in what? What'd you say? What year? 
Oh man. Uh, it's like the 18, 1800s or something. 18, yeah, 1879. Yeah. It's cool. So you got like dudes hit with like giant slabs of meat hanging there next to a guy who's selling cannolis next to a person who's selling crepes next to a person who's selling lettuce next to a person. You know, it's a, it's almost like a bazaar, you know, like a grand bazaar. So it is super cool. Uh, I would second that, Brian. I love the West Side Market. It is phenomenal. Uh, let's go to question number three. Uh, this is from at Gunner has no guns. Who? Oh man! Who Brian has met as he visited me in Fargo, dude? What was the best thing about Fargo when you came up and you visited? Oh, well, I, I love the aquarium. I thought that was a really cool venue. Um, and I think there was that cool speakeasy that we went to. I don't remember the name of it. Oh, that was, yeah. Um, that was a secret bar in a basement. Uh, yeah, yeah. Behind that cool, like, we had one of those doors that has the only the eye slit that you, like, open up. That yeah. was a really cool thing. I don't remember what that was called. Was it, like, Green Lady or something? No, no, no. That was um, when my brother came and visited me in Fargo. That was what year? 2000, probably 10 or something. I would say it was yeah, probably, probably 10 years ago. Uh, Brian came and visited me in Fargo. The guy who owns that bar is the big concert promoter in town. His name's Jade. He's still up there. Really cool guy. Jade, Jade presents. Uh, and, and he brings all the concerts, rock shows. So I used to work with him all the time because I used to work on the rock station and we used to work in and hand bring concerts to town and stuff. And he had a bar in the basement of his building that was a secret bar. And I want to say it was like called the Nocturnal or something like that. It was some, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was a private bar. So you had to be invited to get in. And uh, uh, we went there. And yeah, they had the whole eye slit thing that you have to go in. And uh, it was just really cool. So I can't believe you went to that. You must have had, that's not, that wasn't every night that that thing was open. He just yeah, it was up. really fun. It was really fun. Uh, do you think aliens are on Earth living among us? Is what Gunner Has No Gun asks for question yes. number three. What? No doubt in my mind. Get yes. out of here. I will die on this hill. <laughs> what are you t- Wait a minute. Are you a conspiracy theorist for aliens? No, I have proof. I have one. I have oh, locked in my God basement. Sakes. Yep. What happened? Yep. No, I'm just joking. I don't. I don't think aliens are amongst us. If they were, I don't think they would tell us. For one, you know, look how we treat any sort of minority. Number one. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Good point. Yeah. Number two, uh, it'd be really fun to like be a secret secret alien. You know, I think that would be really fun. Okay, well, I'm going to go for more of the scientific approach here. No, aliens are not walking amongst us. Uh, I don't think alien. I don't think they would hide if aliens made it to the Earth. I think they would. Why, dis- not? Why would they? They wouldn't have. Right. Okay. Just look at this. The science behind this whole thing. If you are an alien and you have yeah. the ability to travel light years. Hundreds of millions of light years at a time. You have to be such a superior species in order to travel. We're talking about bending space time. And then you're going to come here and hide. Well, yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to go to the West Side Market and see all those hanging meats. <laughs> That's the bizarre. <laughs> People wouldn't be able to go. Said Mark You're it. right. The news. They everyone and, saw that one Anthony Bourdain episode, and they're like, "Oh shit! Yeah. Cleveland's a sleeper. Right. We got to get there now." <laughs> I had no idea. I just saw him in Thailand. Not that big of a deal. Not that big of a deal. That's right. But right? whoa, Cleveland's got culture. I just That's ate awesome. some corned beef and slime, and so now we got to go to the West Side Market. But Zorg. How would you go into the market? <laughs> you're right. That's what I'm saying. You're you're right, Flevlam. I need to think of a way to disguise myself. <laughs> How about this? How about yeah. I'll sit on your shoulders and I'll wear a trench coat. <laughs> but then, 
<laughs> but then we'll be 14 feet tall. <laughs> Wait a minute. How tall are these aliens? Are, are they huge or are they seven small? Feet each. Oh, my seven God. Seven feet tall. <laughs> what aliens do you have in your head? Are they small? I have tiny big. aliens. <laughs> Man, our aliens are way different. You're Either, right. Write us, write us, let us know what your alien uh, looks like. Your the height, yes. especially. Yeah. How tall is your How tall is your mythical alien in your head? I had tiny aliens. I was just thinking, what are your guys? Your guys, what they disguise themselves as NBA players? <laughs> they don't need to disguise themselves. Have you seen some of those guys? Is it Gerardo Galvez? Is it an alien? <laughs> Get out of here, man. That's true. I've seen uh, the brow playing basketball, and that man. Yeah. It's a good point. Yeah. That's a My good point. gosh. Uh, no, I don't think aliens are walking amongst us. I don't believe anybody who's ever said that they've seen an alien. I don't think that ghosts exist. I don't think I'm not fun here at all. I don't think aliens built the pyramids because they're like, oh, we built it with lasers, but they built it out of rocks. Like, dude, you have a spacecraft, you have an intergalactic spacecraft, and you're going to build something out of rocks? Like, what are you doing? What are we doing here? If anything, aliens should have built the St. Louis Arch. You know what I mean? That looks like, that should be a portal to another dimension, not a, a, a the pyramids. People are dumb. People are dumb. There's nothing more yeah. that is that has honestly been proven than how stupid human, hu, uh, humanity is. All right. What are we on? Question number four. We're crushing it, Brian. I think we're four. Yeah, number we're four. flying through this. We're 21 minutes in. All right. Here we go. <sighs> Space Jam 2 is coming out soon for the record. So, Dude, I Speaking hated Space Jam aliens, 1. Aliens dressed as NBA stars. Did you like Space Jam 1? Uh, uh, no. I mean... I hated it. I guess hated it i didn't really have an opinion on it i guess uh, i came out when i was in sixth is it grade. okay it was such a big sh- uh movie brian they we watched it in class we watched it in, in like in a classroom when it hit vhs wow. and i remember rory remember rory my friend rory oh yeah, yeah, yeah dude yeah, rory. that guy used That's to sing name. i believe i can fly like all the time he used to just sing it like he'd be putting on his coat, be like, "I believe I can fly." Oh no, it was a starter jacket. Remember those things? Like, oh wow! Over here. Yeah, I believe the starter jacket. The sky. Yeah, I was like, "Roy, that song is awful. Can you stop?" Even then, I was a jaded music critic. It's like uh, R. Kelly's a rapist uh, and a cult leader. Yeah, R. Kelly. He made that guy. Yeah, can't read. By the way, that guy. If you ever feel like you're not doing anything with your life, just remember R. Kelly's a millionaire and he can't read. So just remember that. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's also like uh, a kidnapper and a rapist and an abuser and he's in prison, which is great. So, but he still can't read. Yeah, true. Uh, What do we got here? How? Okay. This is question number four uh, from at IB Plumbing, who has the greatest handle on Instagram. IB Plumbing. IB plumbing is uh, how is living with the parents and is it still working out? How long did you all live with the parents? All right. Well, we have the same parents, Brian, you and I, I know, but I don't live with them. You should answer that one. Yeah. Uh, well, my younger brother doesn't live with my parents and I do. So my younger brother's uh, buying a house and renovating it right now, like a true adult. Uh, and I moved my family of four back in with my parents. So how is it? Uh, I saw my friend Steve say that uh, it's both. You're, you're looking at your past and your future at the same time. And I thought that was a great way to put it. So shout out to Steve-O who just moved back in with his parents and he's the same age as me. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, we're, all, me and my friends are really killing it, Brian. Um, uh, no, it's, he said it's like looking at your past and your future at the same time. So, which is exactly it. Cause you look at your past cause you're, you know, you're living with your parents and you're like, Oh my God, that's right. My parents, they do this with 
you know, the dishes and they do this in the refrigerator and they, you know, just like you understand their habits and their patterns and how they like to do things. And then in the future, you see them because, you know, like my mom and my dad both fell asleep like four minutes into a TV show that we were watching the other night together. And then, so my dad was snoring and my mom woke up because my dad was snoring and my mom was like, you know, <laughs> hey, hey, you're snoring. And my dad's like, oh, I love this show. You know, and like, they both like startled each other. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's what I'm going to be like in like two years. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. <laughs> that's, like, that's so quintessential. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love it. Uh, but I've, I, I've been here for, this is going to be the first week cause we got here last Friday. So this we're one week into it and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going great. If it wasn't going great a week into it, it we'd be in real trouble. Plus like all my shit arrived today. So, uh, <laughs> we're going to be here for, I hope like a couple months. Cause like we started off the show, Brian helped me load those super heavy, Tempurpedic bases, like they're stupid heavy. Um, and yeah, why? What do you? What do you but, remember living? But also very comfortable. Tempur-Pedic. Just in case they're listening and they want to sponsor the show. So comfortable. Tempurpedic. So comfortable. So comfortable. It's, the durability is in its weight. That's where it comes from, dude. It was designed by NASA. Okay, there's nothing. I have a space bed. All right. If anybody is going to have aliens walking amongst us, they're going to be sleeping with me because they're going to want to feel like home because I have a space bed and it's amazing. It is. Ama- it's the best yeah. thing I've ever had in my life. My bed has Wi-Fi. Think about that for a second. Okay. My bed has Wi-Fi. The state of Oklahoma doesn't even have Wi-Fi. My bed has it. It's amazing. Uh, Brian, what do you remember? When was the last time you lived with mom and dad? Oh, man. Uh, long time ago. When did you move out? Uh, out? I don't know. That's a hard... That's a, define <laughs> move. Define, define out. What year did you go to Chicago? Oh, uh, 2012. 2012. Okay, so it's yeah, eight years. Eight, eight years ago. But I was in Akron before that. Yeah, you lived in so, Cleveland, you lived yeah. in Akron, you didn't live with mom yeah. and dad. No, I think it's been about 15, maybe 20 years. 15, no, 20, 20 years? years I was, 20 years, I was 10 years old. So. <laughs> <laughs> Brian moved out when he was 10. <laughs> Brian's like, I'm out of here. And like left. I took my baseball, I took my baseball cards and a peanut butter jelly. Well, I wasn't cool enough for baseball. I had Pokemon cards. Oh, yeah, that's right. Pokemon cards. Oh, my God. Uh, What's I see? Because I lived in college. I lived out. So that was 2004. And then I came home after college, 2008, and I lived with them for about six months while I was looking for a job in something they call now the Great Recession. They didn't call it that then. They just called it start paying your student loans. That's what they called it. Um, so I lived with my parents for six months and I found a job in 2008 and that was Fargo. And I went, I just loaded up my car with whatever could fit. And I drove all the way to Fargo, North Dakota, which is like a two day drive from here. And, um, and yeah, that was, that was mine. So I say 2008, I haven't lived with my parents in 12 years. That sounds right. So I I haven't lived in Ohio. Six. Yes. That's how young and gorgeous I am. I haven't lived in Ohio, Brian, in 12 years. I don't know the roads anymore. I forgot. Wow. Yeah. And this isn't the childhood home we grew up in. We didn't grow up here. I'm not used to living in this house. I don't know this house. I've never lived in this house before. My parents built this house. And it's gorgeous and way bigger than the house we grew up in and nicer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now, and now we're back. Um, Brian's just visiting. Yeah. Them. As soon as we left. Yeah. It builds character. It builds yeah. character. You just keep that in mind. Do you notice as soon as we yeah. left, that's when dad started hiring a guy to plow the driveway 
and like you know what i mean they're like oh yeah yeah i got a guy to cut the grass i got a guy to plow the driveway i got a guy to, i was like yeah because your labor force is gone <laughs> yeah exactly you lost exactly. everyone doing all the work around here <laughs> that's right that's right uh all right here we go question number five it's question number five uh okay this is from at izzy guy 443 at izzy guy 443 what's up izzy guy long time no talk here we go it says give up one forever tacos pizza burgers or wings forever that's a good uh, one forever is a long time yeah give up Jeez. one forever i can, i know it can you get through the list again easy give up the list again uh, tacos, pizza, burgers, or wings. Give up one forever. Oh my God. So I, I used to think I was not a wings guy. And then I got really into this YouTube show called hot ones. And it's just basically a guy interviewing a celebrity while eating hot wings. Right. And then every time I watch it now, I'm like, Oh my God, I need to eat some freaking hot wings. Uh, Brian, like I yesterday. appreciate it. If you don't mention our direct competition, on this show because i mean that's and then i s- stopped watching it because they were racist and horrible people on that program and then you tuned into so i give up wings forever yes because of that yes easy decision would it be wings though for real would it be wings hot ones is great by the way you're the one who told me about hot ones and i uh, I love the show. I, 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 it's great. It's gotta be. It's gotta be wings, right? Because if you, if you give up burgers, you can't get like a, an emergency quick lunch any anywhere on earth ever again. You know, and then yeah. pizza and tacos. Those those are literally like my two main food groups. Like, there's no way I'm giving up either one of those. I eat pizza and tacos six times a week, so yeah. I would die. Yeah, I agree. And if you say pizza or tacos, if that is one of the two that you give up, I don't want to know you. I don't want to talk to you. I mean, there's no, I mean, clearly you're a fucking weird person and you should not hang out with anyone. I mean, if you choose either tacos or pizza, like you should just say, I'd also like to give up uh, communicating with humans for the rest of my life as well, because you're going to be eating by yourself. Cause you're weird. So thank God you didn't say that. Cause I was about to disown you as a brother. If you said pizza or tacos now burgers, don't get me wrong. Burgers. You can't give up a burger, but there's a lot of vegetarians out there. And let's be honest, veggie burgers. They just don't cut it. Okay. They're good. I like veggie burgers, but they're not a burger. It doesn't give you that, you know, that satisfaction. So I yeah. would also go wings, hands down wings, which is crazy because if you think about it, I think 90% of the food I eat is chicken in one form or another, but I would give up wings immediately over tacos, pizza, and burgers. I would just, I would have to do it. Plus wings, wings are good, but I've always felt like wings are an appetizer, you know? Yeah. It's yeah, like- absolutely. It's if wings are if chicken and rice had a baby and it popped out this like little thing and you're like, you know, I think of the Mitch Hedberg joke where it's like, I hear my son crying. <laughs> Mitch Hedberg had a joke about rice that goes, rice is good when I want 30,000 of something. And I, <laughs> right. I feel the same about wings. I'm like, I, yeah. yeah, I don't feel like... Can I just have the chicken? You're teasing me with the wings. You're teasing me. Take all this sauce and just put it on a giant piece of chicken instead of this tiny little thing. So I love wings. I've always felt like they were a piece of the meal rather than the meal itself. Uh, So I just feel I don't feel like eating. You know, it feels like manual labor. It's almost like when you go to a, a a. a red lobster and they're like hey welcome to the red lobster here's a hammer it's like dude am i eating or am i framing a wall like <laughs> what am i doing here can you crack it for me can you serve the chicken in the wing for me uh, That's right. you know you do the work why am i tearing it apart like i'm a saber-toothed tiger 
like tonguing this little, uh, you know, it's like, wow, what are we, dude? And then you have the pandemic going around. You got COVID. Everyone's licking their fingers like a it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Don't be wrong. I'll do it because they're delicious, but I'm not a fan. <laughs> Matt, would you uh, would you believe me if I told you I've never been to Rob Lobster, Red Lobster in my life? Yeah, I would believe you. Yeah. I, yeah. I've never been to Red Lobster. We're not seafood people. We're not. We're not. You just talked about no. your favorite vacation spot of being a beef house in Tuscany. Okay. We're not see- we're not seafood people. When was the last time That's you right. had seafood? Oh gosh, I'd really have to think about that. Uh yeah, you have to think about it. That's how non-seafood we are. What about like fish tacos? Do those count? Yeah. Kind of like a- I'd count that, yeah. So then uh December. <laughs> <laughs> Was I with you last time you ate fish? I think so. No, 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 no. It was no, 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 no. No, it was in Chicago. It was in Chicago. Alex and Lester were visiting. We went to a taco place, and uh, we got some fish tacos. So again, here's my here's my beef with fish, and I know a lot of people love fish, and that's great. And yeah, 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 whatever. Uh, if I am at a restaurant, I am buying meat that is substantial, that will keep me full because I'm already spending money on it. The only way I'm ever eating a fish taco is if I get one for free. You know what I mean? Because it's like, no, 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 I'm going to order what's going to keep me full. Like, I, you know, that dense feeling that makes you feel like you're 900 pounds I love that feeling. I crave that feeling. Everyone's like, oh, I feel so sluggish and like dead inside. I'm like, I love that feeling. Make me feel like that right now. I want to have, you know, what? like Thanksgiving dinner after you eat it and you went back for fourths and you feel like you're, you're, you know, you yeah, feel like yeah, a foie yeah. gras goose, like they're just we're just force feeding you till you have cirrhosis of the liver. <laughs> like I hate that feeling. That's my goal every meal, Brian. <laughs> you're gonna hate yourself when you do that. You don't feel like you're gonna do something like horrible no. to your body. No, oh no. My God. I feel satisfied. I feel like I just feel like you know. Like all the heart bars are up, like do 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 do, you know, like that. That's how I feel. Yeah, right, right, right. So, like, if you were a video game character, your only goal would be to find more food and to eat it no matter what to fill up your heart bar. Yes, which is ironically Im- immediately like deteriorating my actual <laughs> heart bar. <laughs> it's like just. <laughs> That's right. There's a, there's a real fallacy in that gaming logic. Yeah, exactly. It's like my heart bar is full, but so is my cardiac arrest bar. It's they're both completely full. Uh, you no, know, dude. I don't know. I I'm always the guy. It's so funny because I make fun. Of, I make fun of people that do this all the time. But it's like. And I feel like if I had an electric car, I'd be the exact same way because it'd be like, uh, and I'm like this with my cell phone too. If my cell phone's at like 60%, I'm like, I got to charge it. I I don't know what's going on. I got to, I got to plug this thing in right now. I don't know what is up. So if I get like a little bit hungry, I'm like, I got to eat. I got to eat right now. I got to, I got to fill up right now. What's the next time I'm going to have food? I don't know when the next time I can have food will be. So then I eat. That's really bad. I mean, I mean, my God, how have you lasted this long? Seriously. Have you ever been lost in the woods ever? Goodness gracious. Yeah. Remember the time I got lost in the hall of Moss in Seattle? (laughs) Do I ever? I think about that all the time. (laughs) If you don't know this, my favorite memories. Seattle has favorite memories. Seattle has a rainforest, which I don't know if everyone knows that. 
But Seattle has like a bona fide rainforest because it rains so much there. And so this place, it's like Fern Gully. It's so green. It's so lush. And I remember going to this part of it called the Hall of Moss, which is, of course, a place my parents would take us on vacation as children. Like, hey, guys, let's go see the Hall of Moss. Up next, we'll go see the Floors of Bark, like just the worst, worst parts of every vacation is something called like, you know, sounds like a tourist trap. So anyways, we're in the rainforest of Seattle in the Hall of Moss. And I asked my mom, like, hey, Ma, can I go up ahead? She's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I just watched Forrest Gump or I was trying. I thought of myself as an Olympian. But I took off sprinting for no reason. And I did not stop running for like an hour. I mean, I just sprinted and sprinted. And I was like jumping over fallen moss. trees. Lots of moss <laughs> jumping. Jump, like, jump over that moss. It's right. Yeah. It's like, uh, it was stupid. I don't know what got into me. I was 12 years old. And so I got lost in the rainforest because I just ran ahead. My parents couldn't find me. What happened? Because you were with the rest of the group. I was by myself. I remember what I did. What happened? Mom and dad were freaking out. Honestly, everyone was freaking out. I didn't (laughs) care too much because there was so much (laughs) moss to look at. I was was so enthralled with all the varietals of moss. (laughs) Did you say varietals? Is that a word? Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm, I don't believe you. Of moss at all. For, <laughs> moss varietals. That's really Horse what is my interest into the to the mossing world. You just made that up, no doubt. So, uh, yeah, you should look. You should read my blog. It's mosspit.org. <laughs> so I went to uh, the end. I finally found my way. I followed the trail back. I went to the beginning of the Hall of Moss where my parents, this is like pre cell phones, like cell phones didn't weren't out yet. No internet, no cell phone. You can't track, can't call anyone. There's no pay phone in the Hall of Moss. So my parents have like a search party going out. They finally found me and I got beat. I remember that. I got my ass kicked. <laughs> and the worst punishment was. The sandwiches that they fed everyone when we got back to the van were mustard sandwiches. There was nothing on the sandwich but mustard and bread. And I was like, this is a worse punishment than the beating I just got for running away and scaring the living shit out of my family. Thinking I got lost in the Hall of Moss. Anyway, so I ate the mustard sandwich and to this day. Worst sandwich I've ever had. That's it for the show. Thank you so much, Brian, for stepping in and doing five questions. We did miss an episode. Five on Friday. I would plug your social medias now, but he doesn't want it. Unless you want to. Modelo. Buy a Modelo. Buy a Modelo. Drink a Modelo. Uh, It's my only plug. You're the best, man. Thank you so much for helping me move those beds. Thanks for coming into town. Thanks for hanging out. It's good to see you. It's been about a year since I've seen him. Yeah, likewise. That's my brother, Brian. I love you. And we'll talk to you. I love you. you. Let's go drink some beers. Yeah. Now, uh, we'll meet We'll meet on the first floor, and we're just going to go continue to eat pizza and drink beers. <laughs> That's it. Make How sure. Oh, hey, wait, real quick. Wait, before we go, I got to plug this. Oh, shit. No, it's over there. The, uh, if you want the framed, signed drum head, we're still giving that away. All you got to do is go to sparksradio.com slash win. Uh, Brian right here, he's like my web guy. He helped me set this whole thing up. So thank, thank Brian if you've ever typed in your email over there on sparksradio.com. Sparksradio.com slash win. We're giving that thing out on the 20th. So you still got time. Three simple steps. Go there. Follow it. Link is in the description or the show notes. All you got to do is submit your whatever, whatever. Ah, it's all there. I don't want to get into the whole detail, but we are giving that thing away. It's signed, framed, drum head uh, from the Uproar 2010 tour. Uh, a bunch of people signed it. I'm not totally sure who, but the bands on, this, on the tour were like Disturbed, Avenged Sevenfold, Hell Yeah, Hailstorm, uh, Stone Sour was on there as well. So there's a bunch of great bands. Definitely check it out. Go to sparksradio.com slash win to try and get it. I wanted to stress that. 
just to plug it. We haven't done that in a while. Okay. Other than that, we'll see you Monday. Pike will be back and I'll talk to you then. Bye, Brian. Bye. See you guys.